Hey guys, it's Brooklyn and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. So I know recently you guys have been liking my MacBook videos and I was asked to do a part 2 of my MacBook customizations. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. If you haven't seen part 1 of my MacBook customizations or you know just any of my MacBook videos, I will put up in the eye my entire MacBook playlist so that after you guys finish this video, you can go check out my other ones about my MacBook. But yeah, like I said in this video, I'm just going to be going through a couple ways you guys can customize your MacBook. And and yeah, there isn't really much to say other than that, so let's just get into the video. Quickly before I start, I just wanted to say that I know I will probably get a couple questions about my screensaver. And in my first MacBook customization video, I showed y'all how I made this screensaver. So if you're interested on that, you can just go check out that video after this one. And now we can actually get into the video. So the first thing I want to show you guys is related to your desktop. And it is how to get the sky to change colors throughout the day. So if y'all are like me, you might like some of the automatic pictures that come for your desktop that already come on your MacBook. But sometimes it gets a little bit boring just looking at the plain still picture so one thing you can change is to make it so that throughout the day this background of the sky will change colors so in the morning it'll be a sunrise and then during the day it'll be blue like you see right here in the evening it'll be sunset and at night it'll be you know dark And I really like this feature because it just keeps the simplicity of this background, but just adds a little bit more to it. So to do this is super simple. I'm just going to open up my system preferences by clicking on my desktop and going to change desktop background. And I'll click on that and it'll just open up my system preferences right on the desktop feature. So then under the desktop section, you see that this top little area says dynamic desktop. And it just has like a split half and half type of thing going on. And I just selected this first picture. And up here, it gives you this little description of what the dynamic desktops mean. And it just says that this desktop picture changes throughout the day based on your location. So like I said, depending on what time of the day it is, it'll change the color of the sky. And in this little box right here, you can see how the sky is changing and that's how it would change throughout the day for you. I also like having this feature because if I had this bright blue background on for when I'm editing really late at night, it would kind of like hurt my eyes a little bit because it has the night sky at nighttime, you know, it's a bit easier on my eyes. The next thing I want to show you guys is how you can change the size of your dock without having to go through the system preferences. This method is just really quick and easy. Also, you might have noticed how my dock isn't up there and I have to just go down to the bottom and it'll pop up. I also set that up in my last customization video it's really simple to change your dock size all you have to do is go to this little bar right here and if you drag it it'll change the size you can make it really small or really big the size you can make it also depends on how much stuff you have open in your dock but this is way quicker and way easier than going through your system preferences and then clicking through all the little categories to get to where you would change your dock size this is literally just one motion and you can customize it completely from here I usually keep my dock on the biggest size because that's just how I like it to look the next thing you guys can change on your MacBook is putting the full date up on the top bar so as you can see here, the automatic thing is to just put the day, the week, and the time. But you can actually add a lot more to that. So what you need to do is just click on the time and it'll open up this little tab. You can first change this if you want to view it as like an analog clock and it'll change it to that. But I personally like having it as digital, so I'm going to keep it as that. If you click it again and you go down to this bottom section named open date and time preferences, you can click on that and it'll open up your system preferences again. There's a bunch of different things you could check off that aren't checked off yet, and this will change how your time will look up in that top bar. So what I'm gonna do is click under the date options, show date, so that it now says Friday, June 26th instead of just Friday. I personally like to see the full date. And under time options, there's a couple of different features that you can click on as well. I'm just gonna keep it on the show date option. So the next thing I'm gonna show you guys is how you can import an image and put it onto your folder as the folder icon instead of like the little blue folder. And you can also do this with apps as well if you wanna change that icon. So what you wanna do is search up whatever you want the picture to be and then put PNG behind it so that the background will be transparent and it'll just be a cutout of the image you want. Or if the image you want doesn't have a transparent background you can always edit it out so I just searched up butterfly PNG just as an example so once you search that up and you find the picture you want you just want to make sure that it really is a transparent picture and to do this you just want to look at the background and make sure that it has the gray and white grid and that will tell you that the background should not be there at all and it'll just be like a cutout of whatever picture you selected so once you have your picture picked out you want to just copy the image 
and then you can close this tab and go onto the folder that you want to change the picture for and once you have that folder selected you want to go to get info right now you can see that the picture for the folder is just the automatic blue folder and that's what we're going to be changing so you want to go to the picture that's up top in this upper left corner and click on that on your keyboard you just want to type in command v and as you can see the picture just changed onto what i copied and if you close this the folder will now be the picture of whatever you selected and it'll still work the complete exact same as a normal folder would it just has a different icon and like i said you could also do this with your apps kind of following the same exact process and that's just a different way you can make things a little bit more unique on your desktop now if you want to change the picture so you don't like it anymore you can just go back to the get info and click the upper left picture again and just hit delete and it will go right back to that blue folder so you can completely undo this it's definitely not permanent or anything all right the next thing i want to show you guys is how you can change your laptop from light and dark mode so when you're setting up your macbook you obviously know that they have you select whether you want it to be on light or dark mode and i know some people they might change their mind about that they might start off on dark and want to switch to light or you know the opposite and if you want to change that it's a super simple process you just want to open up your system preferences and go into general and right here on the top and in the appearance category you can see that you can change it from light to dark mode and I personally am not a fan of light mode at all I think dark mode looks way better but you might feel the opposite you know you might like light mode better but if you ever change your mind and you want to switch it you can easily do this by going into the general section and just clicking between these three options right here so the next thing you can add onto your desktop is little sticky notes so to do this I'm just gonna search up stickies like I did right here and I'm just gonna open that up and you can see right here it just opens up this little sticky note and you can type whatever you want onto here literally anything and this is good if you want to just keep a little reminder up on your screen for you to do anything you need to and you can also make this full screen like I just did by tapping this little tiny itty bitty triangle that's how I just changed the size and if you hit this icon right next to the triangle it can minimize the sticky note and then click it again and it'll make it bigger and you can see right here up at the top there's different options of what you can do for your stickies so under the font section you can change it to different fonts or change the size of the font if you need to so say if i wanted to make this bigger i can just highlight it go into font click it to make it bigger and you can also use the shortcut for it see this shortcut right here makes it bigger and this shortcut makes it smaller and you can also change the color of the sticky note itself under this color section you click that and you can change it to any of these colors to match however you want it to look on your desktop and when I use these I usually just keep it on gray because it looks the most like clean and simple to get rid of your sticky you just click this little square right here in the upper left corner now it's just gone and like I said this is just a great thing if you need a little reminder on your screen you can make a to-do list on there just any notes you might need it'll be right there on your screen for you to just always see and it's just really convenient the next thing I want to show you guys is how to completely add and remove things into your dock without having to you know like right click and hit the option to remove to dock it's so much more simple than that so say i wanted to get rid of safari all i have to do is click on it and drag it into my desktop and it'll just go away like that and now you see that the safari is not on my desktop anymore but if i wanted to add it back i would just go to my launch pad and click on safari and drag it back in and this is way easier than having to open up the app to right click to choose to put it into your dock or choose to remove it. You can easily just drag them in and out of your dock. The next thing is how you can customize your notifications. So if you open up your notifications right on the bottom right corner, you see this little settings button so you can tap on that and it'll open up your system preferences for your notifications. And here you can choose the apps that you want to give you notifications. And you can also go through and choose what type of notification it'll give you. So there's a banner, there's an alert, and you can go through the different checklist to see like what style would work for you and your needs. And this is really good because some apps you just really don't need notifications for, so this is where you would be able to turn them off. And I almost always have my laptop on Do Not Disturb just because I don't like things popping up on my screen, but I still want them to show up in like the notification tab, if that makes sense. This is just where you would choose if you want to turn that off at any point. The last thing I'm going to be showing you guys is how you can customize the shortcuts on your computer. So open up your system preferences and go over to the keyboard tab. And as you can see in this little bar right here, there's this section called shortcuts. So you can just click onto that. And from here, you can change the shortcuts to whatever you might need. Also, if you don't know what a shortcut is, it's basically you can like press certain keys on 
on your keyboard and it'll do an action. As you can see here in all these different sections, there's a lot of different things that are controlled by shortcuts. And you can customize this, like it says right here, by selecting it and clicking in whatever combination you want to make that the shortcut for that action. Now, I personally don't use shortcuts that much, but if you're someone that does like to use shortcuts, then it might be really good for you to change them to certain keys that might be like easier or quicker for you to use. So that's all the customizations I'm going to be showing you guys in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did like this video, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next video. And comment down below any other video ideas you have for me. It could be MacBook related or just related to anything else you want to see. And I'll try my best to get that done for y'all. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week.